People always ask where I get my inspiration for videos. And I always tell them, it comes from everywhere. My lasagna just had a great idea. Wow. So the question has been asked, and in the way that my brain works, it could not go uninvestigated. So this is officially a Zealand investigation. No Zealand investigation. We're gonna look up something together. Oh yeah, Zealand investigation. We're gonna look up something together. I really did. <laughs> really did spin. Uh, okay. Let's do this. <laughs> if you want to help pay for more wigs and stuff, uh, we do have a game store now in partnership with this website called Nexus, where if you go on and you buy one of the games from my store, it's like buying it from Steam. It works the same as buying it from Steam and it goes into your Steam, but you also send a bit of the proceeds of buying that game to me so that I can help. Well, I have my eyes on a new wig. I'm not gonna brag, you know, but it's even bigger. So what is the worst national team in the world? I've set some parameters for this because being from CONCACAF myself, right? I'm from the United States. It's not a sentence I say very much. Being from CONCACAF myself, there are a lot of national teams that are very tiny islands and I do not hold it against them for being bad. Like there's no reason the US or British Virgin Islands should be any good, right? Or the, the Montserrat, for example, right? These islands are incredibly small and I don't think they should count towards this. So what we are looking for is the worst national team that actually should probably be something, which would be the worst national team that isn't either a micro state or an island. Now, the definition of these obviously varies, but basically what we're looking for is, and no offense meant to anyone, because I love traveling, I love experiencing different cultures, but we're looking for it's like an actual country, right? And to do that, we have to go to the FIFA World Rankings. Good afternoon, Zealand. What is your main focus today? Tom Foolery. Cool. FIFA overall rankings. Oh, no, rankings, not ratings. I'm not at that part of my YouTube career yet. Here we go. Uh, so these are the world rankings, and we're going to be doing the men's here. So we got to go to the last page, and now we work our way up. So we have San Marino, Micronation, and Gia, British and US Virgin Islands are there, and Sri Lanka. Does Sri Lanka count? Yeah, I think it is. It's got 20, it has 22 million people. Dude, you can fit the Netherlands two times over in Sri Lanka. Like two and a half of the Netherlands could fit in Sri Lanka. And yet Sri Lanka is behind such powerhouses like Turks and Caicos and Aruba and Tonga. And your excuse is like, well, they focus on cricket. They don't focus on this. Tonga plays rugby. That's what Tonga cares about. And Tonga is still better than you. This is totally it. Sri Lanka is totally the team. The worst national team in the world is Sri Lanka right now. It's three points behind Eritrea. I've heard it pronounced about 20 different ways, but that small country next to Djibouti, A, which is not only a C plus pickup line in a bar, but also the truth. Look at this map, map, map. Here is a map, probably Eritrea. It's just like I hope Qatar is Qatar, but it's Qatar. Why? I don't know. It hurts. It's pain. So the Sri Lankan national men's team. See, these guys look like actual ballers, right? Sundaraj Raj. Naresh, this dude totally looks like he just walked off the bus of some reserves team in France. All right, Sri Lanka national team represents Sri Lanka. Wow! A member of the AFC, the team has yet to make their first World Cup appearance. Really? Or an Asian Cup finals. Okay, they've never made the Asian Cup. They have been playing since 1952, so they've had a lot of practice. The South Asian champions once, so they were the South Asian champions in 1995. But granted, South Asian includes such powerhouses as Pakistan, and Bangladesh and India, and like kind of that's, you know, I, like Bhutan and Nepal in there too, that would probably be it. And maybe like Afghanistan, but they've had a lot of stuff going on for the, like, I, <laughs> one, a lot of mountains, that never helps, right? Two, they've had a lot of stuff going on. America intensifies. And I love this, as is true elsewhere on the subcontinent, top level football in Sri Lanka stands somewhat in the shadow of the country's test cricket team. Somewhat, somewhat. However, the side did reach the second qualification stage for the 2006 World Cup. Now, while this might sound impressive, let's look up Asian World Cup 
qualification. The first round of Asian World Cup qualification is quite possibly the easiest round of anything that anybody's ever seen because the first round of Asian World Cup qualification is a play-in match against some of the worst countries in the world. This is the first round. Mongolia against Brunei, Bangladesh against Laos, Macau beating Sri Lanka. And Sri Lanka actually did get through Macau after a huge reverse 3-0 against Macau in the second leg. So I got no idea re really why Sri Lanka is ranked so low. This is a massive 3-0 performance to turn the result around. We have absolutely no information on this game at all other than the fact that it happened on June 11th, 2019. But Sri Lanka did manage to beat Macau after losing the opening leg to a floating casino. A nation of 22 million people was able to win 3-0. So I give them full credit for that. They've made it to the second round again, which is a large group stage in which Sri Lanka has rather predictably been absolutely beaten like a drum in five matches with a negative 16 goal difference against teams like Turkmenistan and Lebanon. The results being 2-0 to Turkmenistan, 3-0 to Lebanon, 8-0 to South Korea, a 1-0 loss to North Korea, a 6-0 loss to Malaysia. They actually scored a goal against the UAE after the UAE scored like five and Turkmenistan beat them 2-0 again because apparently the Turkmen score two goals and then go out hunting, I, I don't know what. What is on the Central Asian steppes? I feel like David Attenborough would know. On the Central Asian steppes, every national team is better than Sri Lanka and they wear really cool hats, really cool hats. Their first game was a 2-0 loss to India, but they do have huge wins. In 2008, Sri Lanka hit a high watermark, powered by superstar striker Push Pakamura, which I only know because that 2008 FIFA, or it was like, what was it, 2000, uh, the 2010 FIFA World Cup video game? Sri Lanka's in it and has a striker named Push Pakamura. I can only assume he's the guy that contributes to a 7-1 win over Pakistan and a 6-0 win over Bhutan. But that was in 2009, and in qualifying for the World Cup in 2018, apparently Sri Lanka lost both matches against Bhutan and failed to qualify for the second round. And Bhutan is a country that is so small, when you look at a map of Asia, you actually can't see it. Reese, I'm going to need you to zoom in. It would have qualified as a microstate if it was below Sri Lanka and would not have been considered the worst national team in the world. And clearly it's not, because it knocked Sri Lanka out last time. Thank goodness Sri Lanka is making moves. Its current world ranking is actually the lowest it's ever been, which is hilarious, especially considering Sepp Blatter visited Sri Lanka and opened a new stadium in Jaffna. During the visit, Blatter said he was not pleased with the development of football in Sri Lanka, but they paid him enough money to show up anyways. Good for them. He was also joined by AFC President Sheikh Salman bin Abdelhim Khalif al Shoot, I was so close. Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim al Khalifa. Bless you. Now, if we take a look at the players, we do actually have one player who plays not in South Asia. He plays for Berliner AK07, which is a German club that is in the Regionalliga Nordost, which is the fourth tier of Germany, where it breaks into full regionalness. And that guy's probably their best player, let's be honest with ourselves. He's got three appearances, Wasim Ahmed Razik. The majority of the national team for Sri Lanka plays for either Air Force FC, which is a Sri Lankan club located in Colombo, and we can probably hazard a guess as to what they do. Or they could play for Army SC, uh, which is, you know, it's based in Homagama and was renamed Defenders FC. That's good. And in, in 2018, really, it distances you from the I don't know exactly. They did draw on aggregate and lose on away goals to a club from Bhutan, so. Could I interest you in Navy SC, which uh, the Navy Seahawks plays the highest league of Sri Lanka, the Sri Lanka Premier League, and they were renamed the Navy Seahawks after Navy SC was again probably too transparent. Finished fourth in the league though. So the armed forces are very well represented in the national team. Chennai City is actually in football manager, which is of course the game I normally play. So this guy might be the actual most talented player because at least he's there. Charithra Mudian Selage. I would bet my life savings I said that wrong. Here are their overall records against teams. Uh, they actually have a very good overall record against Taiwan and Guam, which deserves full credit, right? Brunei and Bhutan, which are again, micro states. They have a solid record against, but of course, Bhutan knocked them out of the last World Cup. 
uh, Macau and Mongolia they've split with, but real hard ones against Cambodia, Bangladesh, where they've, they've played Bangladesh 18 times and lost 12 times. They even played Hong Kong, lost five to nothing in their only tie. They're really dead even with Macau here, which again is a floating casino. But their coach, their coach is from Bosnia. Who is this guy? Bosnian professional manager holds Australian citizenship. He's currently the head coach of the Sri Lankan national team. He's been the head coach of the Brunei national team. He was an assistant at Werder Bremen. What is this guy doing here? He was the coach at Al Riyadh. This guy moves all over the world. What a weird, crazy life this guy's got to live. They can't even really make hay in the Challenge Cup. In 2006, they played in the AFC Challenge Cup, which is like the AFC Cup for small countries. When they didn't have to qualify, they ended up finishing second one for their six games. But this is, of course, the powerhouse team that was beating Pakistan 7-1, Bhutan 6-0. We know we're not in those glory years anymore because they've actually failed to qualify for challenge cups that were hosted by the Maldives and Nepal. You can imagine what types of teams were there and they simply did not make it. The most recent South Asian championships, they did not make it out of the group stage, played two matches, drew one, lost one, and they were out. The current reigning South Asian champion is the Maldives from 2018, beat India 2-1 in the final. Don't worry. Sri Lanka didn't make it out of the group stage. I really want to watch this tournament. The Football Federation has not sold broadcasting rights. Come on. You have a country of 22 million people and they haven't sold broadcasting rights? This is the squad that was announced in 2018. These are our lads. This is the official site, by the way, of the Sri Lankan national team. So congratulations to them for... I don't know how much you have to pay for that. Based off the TV rights, I'm guessing the Sri Lankan national team has to pay you for that, but amazing. That's the worst national team in the world. 22 million people in Sri Lanka sit 206, scraping its way by Macau to get to the next round of Asian qualifying. So they're actually back on the up. They didn't have to play Bhutan. Curiosity satisfied. If you want to know anything else about the worst national team of the world, then I'll see you on stream. We'll talk Sri Lankan footy all day long.